Hello, and happy World Commons Week. Welcome to the International Association for the Study of the Commons, or IESC's fourth annual World Commons Week event, and thank you for attending. My name is Charlie Schweik. I'm a professor at the University of Massachusetts Amherst in the USA. I'm president-elect of the IESC, and I'm a co-organizer of the World Commons Week event. Um, World Commons Week is a global annual event where we're celebrating and promoting commons research and practice. This is our closing webinar for the week. And we like to close this with uh, uh, highlighting ISC's wonderful early career network community. Um, it's just a wonderful community within IESC and we're, we're celebrating commons research and practice, but we're also celebrating the ECN. I'd like to welcome and thank my colleague, Gita, who's organized this panel for us. So let me explain how this works. We've invited our keynote speakers to, to speak for approximately uh, 35 to 40 minutes um, in total. I'll, I'll act as a timer. I'll signal when there's about five minutes left. The, uh, the last 15 minutes or so, um, or we can be a little, we can be flexible. Um, we'll be left for question and answers. Uh, and we'll end at the top of the hour. Um, to ensure the webinar functions well, we've limited video to the speakers, the speakers and the moderator and the, the and audio for the attendees is muted. Um, it, uh, audience members uh, can ask questions through the Q&A function and we'll also watch chat. Uh, and so, yeah, um, we'll, we'll, I'll be behind the scenes um, watching Zoom Hita will be looking for questions. And now let me turn it over to Hita for, to introduce our speakers. Thanks, Charlie. Um, and hi, everyone. I am Hita Unnikrishnan. I am uh, the current representative of the Early Career Network of the IASC. I am also a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Sheffield in the UK, where I am studying in community energy um, I also dabble in water governance. So that's a bit about me. Um, in today's um, keynote, we'll have two of our colleagues from the ECN talk to us about their experiences um, in uh, of being part of various activities that that uh, the ECN has uh, facilitated over, over the last couple of years. Uh, just to introduce the ECN, um, Desiree, could you? Um, yeah, um, just to introduce the ACM, it's a very vibrant, uh, friendly, self-organized community of scholars and practitioners who self-identify at uh, as being early career. Um, we have about 158 plus members across the globe, uh, and this community has only been growing since its inception um, from 2019. Uh, we pride ourselves on being what we, we like to call a community of care. Um, there are four of us currently who sort of uh, work behind the scenes to uh, facilitate some of the activities that the ACN does. So I have some uh, three more of my colleagues, Beryl, um, who was the Early Career Network representative before me, um, and Dane and uh, Eve and um, Eve and uh, Maria, who uh, work as the membership coordinator and, um, and uh, the financial officer, respectively. We've done a number of activities um, that foster peer-to-peer -peer networking and mentorship or collabor provide collaborative opportunities, but also with this larger aim of fostering equity and diversity and just caring for each other. Some of these activities you can see as, um, uh, as on your screen. So we've been an active member, as you can see, of these World Commons Week organization uh, 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 events. We've uh, come together for a LATAM Early Career Network meeting. Um, there was an IACEC and network meeting that you can see on your screen. And um, in 2020, we've been active part of the global conferences, the biennial conferences organized by the IASC uh, in 2021. Um, we also have several working groups and discussion groups, each of which uh, do uh, some fantastic have some fantastic conversations and and outputs really one of them for example is this um thing that we did with the in common podcast where we created a small mini series called navigating interdisciplinarity uh where we had conversations on on the idea of interdisciplinary 
uh, research and practice, but also some of the underlying concerns such as power, gender, uh, you know, or just fostering communities of care uh, within academia. Um, so yeah, uh, I encourage all of you to check out some of uh, the stuff that we've been doing. Uh, and um, I'd like to welcome uh, Cheng and Desiree, who are my colleagues. Um, would both of you, uh, before before you give your talk, would you also introduce yourself uh, to say a bit about where you're from and what you do? Um, and then let's hear from you. Uh, maybe start with Cheng. All right. Thanks, Hita. Um... Please, uh, next slide, please. Uh, before I get into the details of what I want to talk today, I would like to give me uh, some background, uh, give you uh, some background about me. Um, my name is Phuc Sapong Visut Dongdu Sadi, Echo Bai Sheng. Um, I'm a visiting scholar of the Ostrom workshop right now, and I'm a doctoral student from Nida, Thailand. Um, I'm interested in uh, common study and uh, personally I would call myself I'm a like a practitioner but uh, when I joined the ECN I think uh, my life was changed uh, now I think I would start with the early career scholar so uh, that's all I all I have today <laughs> okay Desi, please. Yes, hello. Uh, thanks for, for the nice introduction. Also, Hita, I'm happy to be here. So yeah, my name is Desi Schwendenhammer. I'm from Germany and um, I'm a PhD student still in the, the early stages with University of Freiburg. And yeah, I'm uh, doing my PhD in sustainability governance. And more specifically, I want to look at aspects of uh, power and institutions and uh, equity concerns and the governance of marine protected areas in Tanzania. That is my research focus. Yes, and I guess uh, I'll talk more later and hand right back to Cheng to talk about his part of the webinar. All right. Okay. So uh, now I would talk about uh, my experience as an ECN, right? Ita. Okay. So, um, before we jump into uh, what I did when I joined the ECN, I would uh, I would talking about myself just a little bit. Uh, before I joined the ECN, I am a visiting scholar of the O'Neill School, but in that time, I think I I find I find the way to something different. Um, as a visiting scholar of the old new school, I have uh, many activities, but when I found that in the Indiana University have the Ostrom workshop, I'm kind of interested in uh, the common study. And then I joined the research series and uh, the colloquium series. And I found that this is what I'm interested. So, and after that, I try to search on the internet about IASD, and I I found um, the ECN is the network for the early career scholar. So, I after that I apply for the ECN and start to join the first meeting, and later. Uh, the Ostrom workshop want to uh, create the first, how should I say, um, the Ostrom Summer Academy program for the first time. And uh, the e ECN assigned me as a coordinator. And after that, my life changing because um, I have uh, a great opportunities to, to join uh, the design process uh, for the last year. And along the process, I, I found that it's, uh, it's very interesting. Um, the, a group of the professional want to create uh, the product, productive learning process through the Summer Academy. Uh, of course, it's the first 
it is the first uh, summer academy program. It might have uh, many things uh, to improve that uh, for for the next for the next year. But uh, the first the first the first time they did it's uh, it's great because uh, this uh, summer academy program uh, provide me uh, lots of uh, very useful tools. Uh, to do the institutional analysis, and I I earn uh, some of the recommendation from the professional and the experts about uh, how to understand the action arena when I conduct my research. And um, after I I, I finish this uh, certificate. Um, I start to working on my paper and I try to um, jump into the academic world. And I would say uh, this year, uh, since I joined the Ostrom workshop, uh, my life was changed from practitioner to the, the early career scholars and now, I have uh, accept, I, I was accepted by the MPSA to join uh, the next conference. Uh, I, I have uh, the paper to, to present uh, for the next year in April. Uh, so uh, my life uh, uh, changed rapidly this year. <laughs> oh, I forget to talking about uh, how to become a visiting scholars. Um, I think it because I am an ECN member. When I apply for the visiting scholar, uh, of course, I have uh, uh, a mentor here to nominate uh, to be a visiting scholar, but uh, because of the, the qualification of me as a ECN member, I have a chance to join uh, the Summer Academy and a visiting scholar program here. Um, I would say it's because of the ECN and I, I, I received the lots of the opportunities here and uh, I would invite everyone to apply for the ECN member and you will know the door always open for you, but you have to open by yourself. Okay, um, that's all I have today. Thank you. Thanks, Cheng. Um, shall we now hear from Desiree about um, what she has to say? Yes, thank you for, for the great start. I'll take it from here. So um, I will also talk a little bit uh, about uh, my personal experience in the Early Career Network from the perspective of our uh, first discussion and then working group, I could probably say now on, on power and institutions and how we really went from being a, a loose group of like-minded individuals to, to actually working on, on some tangible outputs uh, and what that has meant to me. And yeah, I also joined the the Early Career Network uh, a while ago, I think right after my my master thesis, because then I was working with Ostrom's Frameworks. And yeah, I, I was just curious, I think, to to see uh, what others are doing in that regard, because at, at my university, at least, there, there wasn't a real group of people who was uh, in, engaging uh, with this discipline so much. And yeah, um, ever since, a lot of beautiful things have happened too. So what I'm going to do, just let me... Yes, fix this. Uh, I'm going to take you through our group journey. And then, uh, yeah, probably especially for, for the more seasoned scholars that, that might be tuning in, this is probably nothing groundbreaking or nothing new. It will be like any other <laughs> process of, um, yeah, uh, coming together and, and starting to work on projects. But then maybe for uh, some other, uh, either scholars or practitioners who are maybe uh, more at the early stages of their career, maybe. This can be uh, some inspiration maybe of what uh, your participation uh, 
in this career network or in, in other early career networks could look like and uh, could result in. Yes, and uh, it all started more or less at the beginning of this year that uh, we had one person, Naira, who uh, took the initiative. Hita was mentioning it earlier that we're a self-organized network and uh, a lot of the, the projects or uh, initiatives that, that are going on really rely on one or few individuals really taking the lead and, and kicking things off. And uh, yeah, Naira took the initiative and invited others to form a, a group to talk about power in institutions. And yeah, it turns out that there were actually uh, quite a handful of people who were interested in, in this topic. And we decided to form a discussion group. So that is more uh, a loose loose group of people that, that come and talk and share. And maybe eventually this will form into something uh, more, uh, more professional. Uh, and yeah, we, we turned out to be people from, from different disciplinary backgrounds who so all at the shared interest and were interested in empowered institutions from different perspectives. And one of the first things uh, that were done was really to set up some, some communication channels. So one of the great things of the Early Career Network is there's some online infrastructure already. There's this beautiful, large <laughs> shared Google Drive where um, yeah, that, uh, that everyone who's a member can use and access quite a big landscape out there already. And we also set up um, a mural and our own Slack channel uh, as spaces to, uh, to share and collaborate. And uh, as time went on, we, we took our first steps of conceptualizing. So what we wanted to do, uh, we had all been working with the Institutional Analysis and Development Framework, which probably most of you are very familiar with. And we were talking about how can we bring power into this framework more explicitly or maybe house it in there already. And we started playing around a little on Mural, working with sticky notes and just trying to, to see together um, where we stand and, and what we think. And um, we decided to, to take things from there and really um, set up some other structures. So we wanted to uh, work on the living glossary. So it's something that is constantly added to, to share um, our definitions and conceptualizations of power because um, yeah, there's just so many as everyone who has worked with uh, any power theory will probably know. And we also uh, decided to uh, set up a space to, to share papers or yeah, any literature that we have been working with and uh, start an annotated bibliography. So not everyone needs to do all the work by themselves, but we could really um, draw on, on our collective knowledge a little better. And we also started to uh, to set up regular meetings. So um, yeah, since the beginning of the year, we have been meeting every three weeks. And as things were going on, we really, uh, we, we had the idea of writing a paper together quite early on probably, but it was still <laughs> very far away because we realized that we really need to clarify our own understanding of different aspects related to power, the IID framework and how they are related first. So we really, uh, uh, we we had some homework that that we took home and we we came back prepared and decided to um, work together. And for example, one time we had this exercise discussing uh, different case studies that we had come across before uh, and the ways in in which power came into play. And then also think about uh, which different power framings uh, out of the many would be useful for our own analysis if we were to do one. Yes, and going on, we constantly added to our annotated bibliography, we added to our living glossary, and really uh, took a lot of time um, reflecting, uh, going back and forth, uh, what it all means, how power and institutions would be related, and also, uh, yeah, sharing all, all the questions that we still have, because there are many. <laughs> and um, over time, we started to become a little more systematic, and really, instead of just an annotated bibliography, then had an annotated database. So we um, could guide and structure our reading, uh, our questions and comments a little more, and uh, yeah, have something that's a little better comparable and that we can draw from. And uh, yeah, finally, let's say halfway through the year, we really came to a point where we were able to uh, frame an actual paper idea. And uh, 
going along with, with the developments that we have seen in, in literature, we really wanted to go beyond uh, asking what makes institutions long enduring, but instead, uh, yeah, really tackle the, the question of how we can transition to institutions that create uh, or contribute to more equitable and sustainable outcomes. And we think that some of the most pressing questions or important questions that we need to address there um, are uh, the, the underlying power dynamics uh, that are part of institutions and may maintain and shape them and how they also influence rulemaking interpretation processes and really uh, make a point of uh, having power explicit in our study of institutions. And then at the same time, uh, some of us also participated uh, in the Ostrom Workshop Summer Academy that Sheng has already talked a little about before. And that was also a really uh, great opportunity for us to then maybe go out of the group. We were in different small groups and we could then, um, yeah, really mirror and, and get some feedback on, on, on the ideas that we have been working on both on our individual, but also on, on our collective project. So that was a really great time. And uh, eventually uh, we uh, we came to discussing what does it actually mean and how do we uh, get organized about writing a joint paper like that? Because we're, uh, we're quite a few people uh, located in different time zones with different schedules. How do we do this? And also how do we uh, position ourselves against other group who might be uh, working on, on similar questions. And then came the decision to actually establish uh, a different formal uh, paper writing group. Uh, so we still want to uh, keep the general discussion group on power and institutions open for everyone because yeah, uh, we're, we're democratically organized space. And we think that uh, of course, over time, maybe more people may become interested in this, but we also realized that uh, yeah, we need to have some sort of stable group uh, to advance our writing process. Yes, and ever since uh, we have started to, to sketch a draft outline, we have further uh, refined our focus. And maybe some of the main takeaways uh, for me personally from, from engaging in this group, and maybe also uh, the, the key advantages and, and reasons to really join an, an early career network is that uh, having such a group really gives you uh, a, a safe space to, to explore uh, your research niche. Because for me, uh, as a PhD student who's working on, on some issues that are not so commonly discussed in, in my chair group at, at my university, uh, yeah, it, it sometimes can feel like quite a lonely endeavor to, <laughs> to try to uh, tackle certain topics, especially, especially uh, power and institutions where you draw on on different disciplines and yeah, you, you engage with different fields and it can be a lot for, for a single person, uh, especially at, at the early start. And having a group is then uh, a really great way to, to not feel so alone, to, to realize that other people have, have similar questions and yeah, you just uh, get a lot more done. And then also, um, it's also a good practice room for, for interdisciplinary collaboration because although we probably all fall into the category social scientists. We still uh, come from different disciplines. So we have people who are more from uh, from the political sciences, some are more from the sociology side of field and others are uh, more from economics. And we often come to realize that we don't always speak the same language. So uh, in this friendly group, it really gives us the possibility to uh, to practice and to, to become better at navigating interdisciplinarity. <laughs> in this sense. Uh, what's also uh, really great is that uh, as a group, we also have uh, possibilities to take uh, a topic that we care about to, to the outside world and maybe create some visibility. So um, for the upcoming IASC biannual conference in Nairobi, we are also um, hosting a round table on the topic of, of power and institutions. And yeah, that's also uh, such a great thing that as a group is much easier to do than just uh, as an individual person. And uh, the, the good thing about meeting regularly is that we really create some accountability to follow up on, on our ideas and interests. Because for me also initially, um, I've changed course a little in, in my own research, but I wasn't uh, originally planning to, to look at power and institutions per se. And for a while, it, it felt like, okay, I'm 
I'm constantly having the side thing I'm, I'm working on uh, that uh, that shouldn't really be my priority. That has changed now. But I think that for a lot of us, we we have full work schedules, of course. And then, uh, yeah, having this this group and making a commitment to to working on something and coming together really helps you also carve out time for for things that maybe otherwise would never be followed up on. And I would really stress uh, what what Tita has mentioned before about the the community of of care that is created there, because yeah, probably not just in in our group, but all over the early career network. It's such a supportive and, and nice and environment of really cool and, and created people. And yeah, uh, I, I feel it, it really adds to, to my positive experience and is one of the, the greater sides of, of pursuing a, a path in academics at, at the moment to have a group like this to belong to. And yeah, I, I think uh, I'll wrap it up here and hand back over to Hita. <laughs> this platform it's hard to uh get applause <laughs> via this platform but it's there Hita, do you have yeah. anything you want to say yeah just a note on if anyone's interested in joining us obviously the first step is to become an iac uh member um go to the iac website and become a member there and once you do become a member of the iac then it's a very simple process of either writing to us or filling up a short form um, the email is on your screen and yeah, we look forward to creating more little communities of care within our big, uh, rapidly expanding network. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, and thanks so much to Cheng and Desiree for actually uh, sharing some of their experiences. It was it was really nice to hear that from a very different perspective also, right? Because when I joined the ECN as well, I think my experiences have been quite similar uh, in the sense of I joined it when I was going through a very, very uh, oh, oh, hellish period personally. So just the fact that I made friends there that, you know, uh, it, it, it's, you know, friends who care about the kinds of things that you're going through, not just professionally, but also are there to lift you up when you're feeling down. I think that's, I think it's incredible what the community is uh, about. So yeah, thank you so much. Charlie, do you want to? Yeah, well, I'll just add, um, uh, a couple couple reactions and then there's a, a question or two um uh one the ostrom workshop so i i'm a, I, I also got my phd from indiana university and was at the ostrom workshop way back when in the 1990s um when iasc i think was it, it was already um operational when i started my phd but um i i was watching Lynn Ostrom, who was the president at that time, um, working with the ISC, IASC executive uh, director in the workshop. Um, that's where it was located. And that's where I first kind of heard about IASC, I guess, back then. Um, the, the Ostrom workshop and IASC, it's a powerful, powerful connection um, and a deep, rich connection. And I'm, I'm really grateful that you, you, you noted that important connection because it's it's a really it's it's rock solid and uh what what great collaborators i'll come back to that at the end i think um i have to say looking back at my own my own career i'm jealous of you guys <laughs> because you know when i was um, going through graduate school uh well the web was just invented um during that time um the the, the internet was used but not at all like it is now we didn't have zoom <laughs> we didn't have these ways to meet up and um I'm, my it's it's really fantastic that you're meeting as frequently as you are and that you're building this community i think i think the the community is did the slide say something like 168 members um, 158 that's, yeah that's a that's a remarkable amazing and wonderful um, so anyway, I'm jealous of that. I wish I had had the experience that it sounds like you guys are having through this network that you're creating and, and, and the powerful um, uh, people that launched it uh, um, and, and your group that's got bringing this energy to it. Um, I guess um, one, one question that's been asked is um, what, what ideas, where do you see the ECN going 
um, maybe in the next year or two. What what uh, um, it, it, well, let, let me just add the, the, the idea that you, you're focusing in collaboratively on a paper. And I think that this is my own reaction, um, not, not the questioners, but um, what, what is your, um, uh, the idea that you're working on a, a collaborative paper and in discussions around the connections between power and institutions, which is such an important area, I think. Um, that's such a, a, a cool endeavor. And I'm really excited to see what comes out of that endeavor at the time. But um, so that's one, you know, the collaboration that you're doing is one thing, but I, I think that what, what, where do you see uh, the ECN going over the next year or two? Um, are there other things that um, IASC can help with in terms of helping your community continue and, and maybe move in directions that you haven't been able to? That, that question's to any of you three. I think I'll wait for Desiree and Cheng to answer before I give my take. Oh, I think uh, this question is Desi should be first, right? <laughs> <laughs> And I thought I had some time to reflect. <laughs> well, I've got I, I could I've got a couple ideas in my own head, but I, yeah, I'd rather hear what you guys have to say. That's a, it's it's a good question, really, because yeah, I, I guess sometimes we we get very caught up in in, in the things that we're doing, and yeah, kind of ignoring the the larger context or maybe the larger purpose. Um, yeah. Well, I or maybe think... you're you're focused on the the things you're working on right now, and you want to get through those before you start thinking about new new things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe it's difficult to say. I, I feel, especially since it's such a self organized network. Of course, there's uh not always um like a, a thought of where where's the larger direction going or a central directive where then the individual activities kind of go from but I do think that maybe uh that's more of, of a goal or some things that I've also noticed that were being talked about that of course as in any network uh sometimes there's a lot of members but only a few active members who, who actually bring things forward so maybe <laughs> maybe that's also what Peter was gonna go for but maybe one aim and maybe then also a possibility to uh, engage more and more of the members and bring them from being passive to to more active members is trying to uh, yeah try out different different formats that really call for engagement because our our paper writing group by necessity cannot be something that's that fosters open engagement with with all group members at all times because mm -hmm. they're yeah Navigating among eight people is already quite a task for, yeah. for writing a paper together. But then we also have the these other formats like the, the monthly meetings, or sometimes we also would have these these different regional meetings, right? From from the IAC ECN. So different world regions would uh yeah, come together and present something. I think maybe we could really try to uh create some more regularity there to to really draw on the the, the collective beauty of, of all the cool people and the different topics that they research on. But then again, it's also, it's a time commitment and we also need to understand maybe that not everyone has so much, so much time to, to voluntarily commit to the network at all times. Yeah, maybe I, I hand over to, to the others here before I start rambling. <laughs> I, I have some, the idea for, for uh, the group of the power and institutions. Personally, I have no opportunities to join this group, but it sounds interesting. Um, I think um, for the next year or for the future, if you want to conduct the interesting work about the power and institutions, I think in, in the future, um, the scholars from, from the developing country or some conflict area, it might be very helpful to, to understand the difference of the power and institutions in the other part of the world. Because uh, if we're talking about the power and institutions, just only the big country, like uh, North America or some of uh, 
the can Asian country like uh, Japan or China, it might be have a limitation about understanding the power. But like the 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 power in my country, it's uh, I think it's totally different from the Europe, because the the some of the Asian country military have a uh, more power and powerful in 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 the action arena or something like that. So my idea is uh, we need to recruit the the new member from the developing country or the small country. From from my perspective, I think uh, all of our member it's from the 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 big country and the the the, the country who have uh, many scholar in in this field, but just a few few uh, just a few scholar from the Southeast Asian or from Middle East or from somewhere I I haven't seen them before. So. Um, in the future, we need to do like uh, not just uh, waiting for them to apply for the member. We need to we need to reach them in some way to to invite them to join this group. And I think the future of the common study will will be flourished by the knowledge from the ground from all of this country because. Uh, I think the, the knowledge of the common study came come from everywhere in the world, not just the, the big part of the world. That that's my idea. Can I can I react or just add something to that thought? Um, I'll give an example. I, I think you do have an opportunity like where you have a network that's where you for, you're focusing in on a particular area like power and institutions. Um, um, I've been I've been working with um, Professor Saba Siddiqui at Syracuse University and others, and it was about maybe three or four years ago where um, we collectively, um, it, it's a variety of people, um, Adela Schlager, for example, at um, University of Arizona is involved in it, um, but we we went after collectively. Um, uh, in the in the United States, the National Science Foundation has a, a program called the Research Coordination Network Grants. Um, and I've been, I, I believe in, in Europe, there's, um, I think it's called COST, maybe is the acronym. Um, but uh, I, I think building on that idea, you have an opportunity potentially to maybe in some collective form, go after a grant that would create a network that would do systematic study of power and institutions. Um, in, in, uh, in the uh, North America World Commons Week um, uh, webinar this week, Javier uh, Bersudo um, talked about um, one, he's got a, a, something like a 50 sites in the world where he's studying Small scale fishing, um, and so there are there are people in the network that actually have, you know, had success going after grants that created um, multi site research, and that seems to be like you know potentially an interesting area where the you know as you focus in on a particular topic area that you might have nodes in your network that really want to work on that. So that that just sounds like a really interesting longer term possibility for you folks. Um, I don't I, I, I just needed to add, add that before, but Hita, did you want to say anything? Yeah, I mean, I was, um, one, I was agreeing a lot with what Cheng was saying because um, the context where members come from also adds a lot to the way, the way we interpret some of these topics. Um, one example, again, is this idea of the community. We keep talking about community like it was this homogeneous thing where everyone comes together with the same sort of interests, uh, same things uh, that guide their idea of what you get from a resource and how to protect it when actually communities are heterogeneous. And that becomes even more contested. Like, for example, I was just in this uh, doing some field work in Mozambique uh, for the project that I'm currently employed on. And Mozambique as a country received its independence from Portugal in 1975, 
which is very recent but also it was something it uh, i mean so that that kind of immediately led to civil conflict conditions and i think it was in 1990 1992 that the first president was elected so when you talk of community in a contested landscape like that with less than a generation between between actual civil war and you know and independence and the establishment of a democracy the idea of community becomes even more even more colored with some of these political uh, tinges and the the power dynamics and so on right so i mean just having some of these perspectives that we wouldn't think of unless we actually you know embed ourselves within a landscape i think that would definitely add a lot of value so i was i was completely with cheng on what he was saying uh, there about about just learning from some of the positionalities that we come from right being a bit reflexive about about uh, where our interpretation of power and other other things comes from but circling back to your original question of what you see uh, what we see the ecn to be like in a couple of years um i think the first thing is that the ecn is a very self driven network so some of these activities that you that we've just showcased are all you know uh, member driven in the sense members do what they want and um and really the benefit is really what driven by the members itself um so on one hand i would i would see the fostering of just those interests coming out from within the community itself um and maybe like like desi said if we had a lot more active people and trying to see how we can make the the community itself a lot more active uh would be one of the longer goals um that having said again we are all we are all doing this voluntarily um it's it's uh, yeah we all have different commitments to juggle so something that i was reflecting upon for example is we did the navigating interdisciplinarity podcast series the same group of us then moved into something else that that we found interesting which is the power group for example um and had other people join us with with the interest so in a sense it's a very it's a very dynamic thing so it's it's not as if the group or the collective enterprise ends with the project itself it moves on and transforms into other other forms um, of collaboration which i think is nice um in terms of what we could do better probably i mean what we've been fairly successful in in engaging with some of the broader iisc community for example the in common podcast uh was extraordinarily supportive when we were when we were working on our uh, mini series it also allowed me a chance to get you know into the podcast itself as a co-host but uh that's a story for later but <laughs> but i guess some of these these uh, collaborations with the broader iisc community would be wonderful uh perhaps also some we've also been doing some amount of getting how do i put it perspectives from senior scholars like for example there were sessions with arun agrawal for example or or uh, uh, beth perry from the university of sheffield um uh, both of whom were talking a bit about one about the ideas of engaging with journal mike schoon as well um the ideas of engaging with journal or how to capture grants so we've been trying to get some of that that kind of mentoring into the network but it would be great to see how we could we could foster that a bit more um yeah i i guess more engagement with the broader iisc community uh, would be would be always very welcome but at yeah, the moment yeah. i'm a bit clueless as to how how we could do uh, that beyond the ways we are doing it already well i would uh, you know i'm speaking now from my head as i'm kind of moving into the um uh presidency in january for iisc but um you know i would love to work with you and it really as you've been conveying it needs to be driven by the interests of the network and the people in it first and foremost um but i would love to work with you to try to think about over the next 2 years what kinds of programming we might do to continue to foster and help the network um ideas that come in my mind are um and kind of connected i think to what you were just saying is I've thought I've wondered about in, in other other contexts I've been involved with a um doctoral consortium for example where we we hold a meeting where um uh 
students can present parts of their dissertations with um, um, faculty, you know, in, in those areas, um, reading those chapters and, and, and uh, um, uh, commenting on those chapters or whatever. So that's one idea for um, uh, something around grant getting maybe some kind of workshop on grant getting. And again, you know, uh, we're all Zoom fatigued, but in these contexts, I think Zoom is really helpful because we can, as you've been, you know, you're meeting three times, a, three or once every three weeks. Um, it allows us to build this global community um, in a way. So uh, time zones are always a trouble, you know, a challenge. But um, so anyway, I guess I'm just signaling that I'd, I'd love to work with any any of from your community to think about some programming we can do over the next couple of years. Um, uh, um, I guess what you know one one other question that I, you, you mentioned that you did the interdisciplinarity podcast, and I'm just wondering your reflections on, um, for lack of a better phrase, the tensions between you know getting a, a, a PhD in a particular discipline and depending on the track that scholars taking the expectations of that discipline um, and at the same time you know commons areas are as you reckon you know is a very interdisciplinary field so i'm just curious how you folks are what what comes to mind in that kind of do you see that is there a tension there or, or is there not a tension uh, um, uh, uh, yeah any reactions to to that um, that kind of interdisciplinary uh, challenges with expectations in a particular field. Okay. Um, some idea pop up in my mind, like uh, I heard that in in Indonesia or in Thailand or many country right now uh, concerned about the work like community engagement and uh, before before the covid-19 i i have participated in the conference focusing on the community engagement in asia and i i think it's interesting because uh, their feel it's very very um very different some of them he, their background is came from the art or agriculture or political science or law or many things. But now I, I, I think um, looks like uh, we have a tons of the knowledge uh, around this kind of work. But uh, I think they might, might not be um, understand how to join the IASC I think if we can connect to some of the group of the people who work in community engagement, it might be very helpful to, to, to gain their, their participation and the knowledge to our networks. Because uh, I think it's out there, it's uh, many scholars don't know us and I don't know how to across the barrier about the language because uh, from from my experience um, many of the great scholar and their feet are on the ground have uh, the barrier about the language they they don't have the confidence enough to 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 go at international level to speak to share their knowledge this is a huge a barrier for me from from the developing country scholar perspective. I, I think I I would like to encourage uh, our network to to fight with this barrier, and I think it's very very helpful for the future to 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 develop our field. That that's my idea. Yeah. So in terms of the the language barrier, you're really focusing in on there. Yes. Am I interpreting that right? 
Yeah. And I, I believe that if, uh, if everyone uh, confidence enough to speak or to share their paper, I, I, I don't know how to use the technology or some of the support system to transform their works to, to the English. And I think the, the big barrier is about uh, in, in the non-native country, the scholars don't trust in themselves to to share their their work and i found that most of the work it's very fascinating but it's limit in some of the region it's not go out to the the, the world community i, well, I think I can that, react that, to that is to the big, big problems right now to that point, um, you know, over this World Commons Week event, um, I th it was the Latin America one, we were working on um, trying to do translation uh, on the fly. And you, you folks may know more about this than I do, but um, I was told that the Zoom platform actually has the ability to do um, translations. Um, um, and I don't don't know where on the webinar system you actually do that or how it's done, but it reminded me of like when I was at the UN and they had the the translators in little booths and you had the earplugs in and the speaker was speaking in whatever language. And um, boy, it would be wonderful if we could figure out maybe over the next year how through your network we could actually start to implement on the fly translations of work that people are doing to see how we could start to do that. It feels to me like a real opportunity that we haven't, that I haven't seen us touching on really. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm looking at the time we're starting to run out of time. Um, yeah, I, th I think the question just about disciplines is um, for me, I've always wondered and I've struggled with, uh, I know I came, I came from a very interdisciplinary program at Indiana University in public policy, but I know through my career, I've seen, you know, um, people emphasizing, well, you really should be coming from a particular field. And yet the, the problems that you, you folks are interested in that I'm interested in, um, I like the phrase, um, are, our problems in the world are not vertical, they're horizontal. They cross disciplines. And so there's this balancing act, I think, of trying to meet the expectations of whatever field you're in. Um, and at the same time, um, there's such richness in hearing different people's uh, viewpoints of, of a particular problem we're facing in the world from different disciplines. So. I think that's where I see IASC and ECN being really valuable is having that interdisciplinary conversation. But um, uh, yeah, um, um, I, I, uh, I don't. I, maybe I should let anybody else say anything they want to say, and then we'll turn to closing. Yep. Um, no, I just, I just, I just had a comment in terms of this tension that you pointed out as well. Um, I think one of the challenges that we seem to have is that a lot of disciplines, interdisciplinary disciplines, if you want to call it that way, or schools of thought, engage with similar ideas, uh, but there is very little crosstalk between them. Um, each school views the other with a certain amount of elitist disdain, if I <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to get. I'm probably going to get booted out of this and my university for saying this. But, but, but no, there is a certain amount of disdain associated with anything that is seen as the other interdisciplinary domain. You know, and sometimes I think what we really need is more dialogue between these schools of thought. So, Dustin Garrick, who is an IAC member, uh, professor at the School of Waterloo, and I at, for example, at the Nairobi conference, organizing a panel where we're trying to foster such crosstalk uh like what do we mean when we say the commons right it could mean it could mean commoning it could mean the actual physical commons it could mean you know the tangible commons it could mean things like processes of knowledge creation and so on so how do we then yeah 
sort of speak across these various divides. Also, this whole transitions thing, there is a whole lot of parallels between what this community of scholars says and that community of scholars says. Um, and I sometimes think it's, it's I mean, it's hard for an individual to sort of speak across these multiple languages. But uh, if we have that kind of a dialogue, I think the outputs that come out of the real world for to solve or well at least to understand the real world complexity uh, that we face is probably going to be a lot better uh, but yeah that's just i'll just i'll just add one example it's, it's just happened recently in in my area so i you know, i study in the knowledge commons area uh, mm -hmm. a lot of my work and and I've been, we've been studying open source software communities for example mm -hmm. and in in a project we have we have a, a, a scholar that comes more from the nonprofit management field. Um, and, and she brought the concept of volunteer energy. Mm -hmm. That is a concept in, in the nonprofit area that our colleagues in the computer science field had never heard of. And what that's led to now is this idea of the computer scientists who are using machine learning and um, those types of approaches to try to actually capture um, through big data sets um, the, the dynamics of dialogue that are happening in these digital areas around this idea of volunteer energy. And so, you know, it's those kinds of cross section, you know, those opportunities that um, are really wonderful. And I, that's, that's, you know, one of, the, one of the many reasons I like to I gravitate to IASC because you can have those conversations. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess we're, we're at time. I, I, I did, and there was one other question about um, the, the, the ECN scholarly community versus the practitioner community. I, I was wondering if you wanted to say something about that before I close. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Maybe maybe building the the bridge to Cheng's last comment and, and yeah we we talked earlier that maybe we we see more and more practitioners also coming to the network and then uh, yeah maybe also taking another example of our group I mean yeah we're talking about power and institutions and we we have this aim that we really want to add to the conversation to uh, to contribute to more uh, just sustainability transitions which of course then goes beyond just having this theoretical conversation that we're currently having, but then also uh, maybe taking practitioners on board. And yeah, maybe due to the fact that at the moment, our, our group consists of people who are more in, in the scholarly world, of course, the first idea was to write a paper. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's, it's good, it's, it's, it's important, and we, we definitely needed to, to really refine our understanding to see where do we come from and where do we want to go. But yeah, in, in the long run, I'm I'm sure that hopefully we'll we'll also have the opportunity to then maybe open up again and and find a different format or different modes of working together, so we can actually engage with people who come more from from the practical side as well, and then yeah, have have these people on board that have these different experiences also maybe from from their own personal and professional background working in different regions of the world and how they experience the relationship of power and institutions. Yeah. Yeah. thinking in the future that would be really great and, and important and I hope that that we find a way to to get there you know in my um lifetime and I'm feeling like I'm getting really old now <laughs> but um I find myself I used to work with Eleanor Ostrom and I find myself well, I always wish she was still around but um it feels to me like the 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 ideas um, surrounding commons, commoning, self-governance, um, and everything that kind of is around those ideas. I, I know in my own teaching over the last 10, 15 years, I teach an environmental policy class to undergrads. And I know I've seen um, kind of this lack, um, this, this lack of hope um, and discouragement about what kind of world have we inherited. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I've seen, you know, it's, it, it's gotten worse and worse, it feels like to me. And when I teach um, topics around commons, commoning, um, governing the commons, self-governing communities, um, and, and these efforts that are happening both in more traditional formats and also in the new commons areas, 
that's where I see so much hope. And when I, when I introduce these things to my students, I see their eyes get hopeful, honestly, sincerely. Uh, and so um, it, it feels to me like in recent years, there's been more and more increasing, increasing interest in comments and commenting ideas um, than I've ever seen in my career. Um, and that's where I wish Lynn was around again, because I think it would be really, uh, um, yeah, um, I think she, you know, it'd be interesting to hear her perspective on that. But, um, but so, uh, yeah, I think the dialogue that you, you folks may have already begun and continue, I just want to encourage that, because I know I've got more practitioner side students who, when they've heard about the ECN, they've been like, wow, <laughs> there's this uh, early career network around IESC. So um, let me pause just to see if anybody has any closing things they want to say, and then I'll close. I would Thanks. say uh, thank you. <laughs> that is my best part of my, my, my talk today. I would thank you, uh, Dr. Charles, Daisy and Hita to having me today. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome uh, because of the ECN makes me proud of myself and brave enough to talk. Although I have a limitation about the language, but uh, the Austrian workshop and the ECN and all of you guys allow me to talk and uh, provide me an opportunities to to share something and I think it might be very helpful for the early career scholars to 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 be confident to to share their experience and like you said Dr. Charlie um, from the practitioner transform themselves to be a scholar is not easy especially like me now I'm working on my paper. The first draft of my paper is try to uh, try to un understand all of the learning process to community engagement. I don't know how to transform my work to be a, an academic work. All of my paper is talking about the, the process of community engagement. It looks like uh, it's look like it looks like uh, just a paper to share the experience. I don't know how to conduct the academic paper, but now I think it's time to focus on some theory or some of the concept of the institutions. But I, I just want to say thank you for all of the things happened to me this year and the next year also. Thank you so much. I guess I would join in, in in the thanks because yeah, preparing for uh for this keynote, I, I got to meet Cheng and, and we got to exchange and yeah, it was really nice and also the possibility to really take a moment to to pause and appreciate what we have with the early career network and to feel really proud and also remind ourselves that it takes a lot of effort to also yeah, keep keep it alive and keep it going and that it's definitely worth it. So yeah, thanks yeah. for having us today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Language should never be a barrier. So, yeah. <laughs> well, we appreciate your energy. We appreciate, you know, your efforts to put this talk together, your time. Um, and, and uh, yeah, it's, ECN is a bright, shining, shiny uh, object in ISC, and we appreciate all the energy that's going on and um, uh, are thankful to the present leaders and the past leaders and, and uh, want to keep this going. So thank you for your good work. Um, let me turn to, uh, I'm going to now close with um, this event by um, sharing a couple things. You can see my screen, I hope. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So if, if you haven't seen, so this is the closing session of the 2022 World Commons Week event. Um, and I'll just close by saying, sharing what, if you haven't seen what, what we, what happened through the week. So um, this was, and the, and the fifth was the Africa um, keynote. And in each of these slides, the, uh, the webinars are now recorded with the exception of China and this one, um, which will be up soon, but all the others are up on the website already and on YouTube for um, watching. So this was the Africa one. 
Um, for time, I'll just show the screen and you can read it. Um, Charlie, yeah. if you could do a slideshow, that would be great. Oh, I'm not? What am I doing? Oh, you I thought just... I was. <laughs> I'm not share screen sharing? You're screen sharing. The yeah, you need to well, you need to press the present thing so oh, that the... I'm afraid to do that actually, because <laughs> it, I've got multiple screens. And if I do that, I will lose. You can see it though pretty well. No, we can you? see it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. No, I'm just gonna do it this way because of my <laughs> multiple screens. But um, so Africa, Oceana. Uh, uh, Javier um, represented North America with his talk on local and global efforts on aquatic foods. Uh, in China, we had Yahoo Wang um, give a talk on his Commons Governance textbook. Um, that one is not yet on the website. Um, I hope to get the video from that. Um, and that had an English translation. Uh, Eduardo gave the Asia talk. Latin America, we had um, two speakers and that one was um, given in Spanish and we talked about language here. I think we, we absolutely do need to do more in, in language, other languages um, to continue to expand with the idea of hopefully doing more translation on the fly. Um, yesterday, uh, Giuseppe gave his talk. Uh, again, you can see the topic. The topic. Um, again, these are all on the website, uh, the World Counts Way 22 website. And now, uh, as we close the whole week, we had a video contest, teaching the Commons contest. And if you haven't gone to the website, um, that's there. But these were the finalists. So we had one called Design Global Manufacture Local. We had another called Food Futures, and we had another called Transboundary Commons. And I'd like to uh, present the winner based on IESC community voting. Um, it's the Transboundary Commons um, video. So here, here, this, you're the first to hear of this. Um, the I don't even think the authors know. Um, so uh, that'll be announced on the website today and I'll be contacting them. It's a great, great video. Um, also in language uh, with translation. So uh, I encourage you to watch it. Um, as I close, um, it's been mentioned that the Nairobi, Kenya, the biennial in-person conference is happening. We hope that uh, ECN members and others that may be watching this uh, um, webinar um, consider joining. Their time is tight now. Um, it's actually the abstracts, which are very short, 250 word abstracts are due on December 12th. Um, so um, yeah, we ho I hope to see you folks and, and others um, there. And as I close, I just wanna thank, and these are very small um, faces, there's a lot of people involved, um, but I wanna thank the IASC regional coordinators, including Hida for um, the Early Career Network, um, for helping navigate, um, identifying, help, engaging their community, identifying the keynote speakers for this year. Um, it was an all team effort for sure. Um, I, we also wanna thank Karen and Inza um, for their support in this and the Ostrom Workshop, um, Scott and Emily um, for their efforts um, in, in coordinating and, and supporting the video contest. Um, I want to thank my colleagues uh, on the screen for their help with this event. Hita, thank you so much, and Nagunji, Jerry. And I'll close by just saying, um, please, I hope you come to the uh, Nairobi conference if you can make it there. Um, keep being engaged with IASC, and if you're not a member, consider joining. Um, we're, we're a great community, as you can see from this talk. So. With that, I'll thank you all for your efforts. You folks are wonderful, and I really look forward to engaging with you more in the future and appreciate your efforts supporting IESC. Thank Have you. a good day. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.